So these are the Pi T's, 100 amp power, 48 volts, 5.1 kilowatt hours each. Uh, I have five of them over here hooked up in parallel. And you can see I've got two wires coming out the top, going into the breaker over here, and another two wires out the bottom going in. So I'm actually paralleling. I'm feeding in from the top and from the bottom and drawing from the top and the bottom to kind of balance the array. Now, this is how we communicate, connect these guys up. Uh, starting from the bottom and the one that's open at the top is the master now the addresses are programmed as follows the top one will be address zero and we'll notice we use the serial port output for MPP solar first one is zero the second one is one sorry that's the second one one third one is number two the fourth one is set to number three to three up and the fifth one is number four is up and all the others are down or basically the fourth bit third bit so <clears throat> the way to program this guy and we'll connect this cable into the top port the serial port and this is, goes around to our um, lvx 6048wp which is newly arrived and you'll notice that the symbol for lithium iron shows up over there and the way to program this guy is, you hold down the enter, the two up and down buttons together, and it notice it says escape. By default, that's 120 volts output. It's a touch screen, so you don't, don't need to push too hard. It's kind of e difficult to get used to. By default, setting number three is set to use. We set this to PYL to communicate with the PyT's battery. Now, when we remove the BMS communication, and the BMS communication goes into the BMS port over there which says BMS okay if we had to remove this cable let me remove it quickly you'll notice that within a short while that lithium iron icon over there disappears and then you have no communication with the battery and you'll notice that the bar kind of changes too because it has no idea at what percentage the battery is at so if I plug this guy back in and this is not a standard uh, RJ45 plug there are two pairs that are switched around in this unit and we have diagrams for this but this cable is 12 bucks or so off our website we plug it back into the BMS port and within a few minutes the lithium iron symbol will come up and then it will show the correct battery percentage and over here I only have PV1 connected PV2 has got nothing in you can see over here now these little connectors a little bit difficult to get used to at first you, you want to open them kind of all the way up push your wires in at the bottom and then you clip these guys down okay sometimes when I, I first got this guy i didn't want to push it up higher in case i broke it but you've got to go up all the way 90 degrees or perpendicular and then straight down and then i have it's got two inputs for the pv in fact it's got two legs so you can parallel the wires if you wish to uh two you can have two parallel strings in there you don't need a um you wouldn't need a combiner box for the two parallel strings it's always recommended though because you've got uh, nearly 600 volts over here and so this is connected um, to our combiner box over there and we've got these two wires running down into there and you'll see the PV, PV1 is 220 volts coming in because I've got uh, six panels in series actually uh, think about that and then f 500 watts right now there's a cloudy day outside and you'll see the lithium ion symbol is back indicating lithium battery communications now the other other brands of battery will not communicate with this guy okay so if you've bought your batteries prior and you're trying to get them to communicate they will not communicate especially uh, the uh, three letter battery brands out there it has the little Wi-Fi module over there it has a solar disconnect switch on the side in fact I'm going to turn that off right now it also has the cold start if you hold that button down for more than three seconds it will start up and output power without uh, uh, having AC input connected remember this is a grid connected inverter which can also do off grid by the way um, also in the menu over here you can set this guy as purely off grid so it can operate without giving any warnings etc about AC power missing um, it's all in the manual and what's cool about this guy, you can set the time it starts charging from AC power. It's got uh, battery energy feed to grid. So I know for time shifting, 
the guys in California, uh, if you wanted to use your battery energy to push back into the grid at peak times, you can do that. It also has a separate generator input at the bottom over there for AC power if you wanted to charge the generator. And then it has your, um, your grid, live one, live two, neutral ground, and there's your output power, line one, line neutral ground. Your generator input, your battery terminals over there, your BMS port, USB port, it has a knockout, and like I said, lots of rubber grommets in here because this is a waterproof unit. And there's your current sharing cables for paralleling units together. And there's your external CTs, um, which we need to order some. We have not received any, <clears throat> but you can set the time over there. Um, let me show you some other things. So it's start charging from AC, which I've showed you already. And you can schedule time for AC output and AC charge, um, then also or paralleling your external CT function is enabled or disabled. And then on your setting 14s, you can set to operation mode, whether it's off grid completely, power only provides power to PC, grid tie function in hybrid, all the different off grid, off grid 2. Um, it's, it's amazing all the options this guy's got. So uh, it's quite a fantastic unit so far. And then all the thing I'm going to have to do right now is power up the output and test the load. Oh, one thing I wanted to show you while we were running over here. So I've disconnected the solar. I want to show you what the, the, the draw current is. So it's jumping around. Oops, I've got it on AC amps. Let's put a DC amps over there. Make sure it's reset zeroed it put it on the there and we hovering around the 1.9 2.35 jumping around so it seems to average around about maybe two amps maybe less than two amps so that is the non output current draw and you'll also notice the wi-fi module antenna that comes with it so not too bad about two amps so that is about 100 watts standby power. Then if I put the solar back on, and you'll notice the um, UL certifications over there. And so that's it. That's the quick wrap up for the LVX 6048 WP. All right, so the final step is let's do a load test on our 6048WP, LVX 6048WP. So what I have over here, and I need to close this up, but I'll leave it open so you can see. We still have solar hooked up over there, and we have a 50 amp outlet connected to my plug adapters, and I have one phase on this side and one phase on that side, and each of these guys is 1500 watts. So I'm gonna turn them on. And you'll notice it's showing 100%, even though this is a six kilowatt inverter, we have three kilowatts per phase we can add on there. Okay, we notice that the output switches now. Give it a second. Three kilowatts, okay. Now, which means I can add another set of heat guns to this side as well. Now setting as the total output is 4 kilowatts, so 4.38 is the total. Alright, so I've added now 4 heat guns, all running, and the unit's beeping. It's 5.82 kilowatts, so we're right at the edge of the unit. We should be able to run there for most of the time. We can see how many amps it's drawing over there. Oh, it's my meter that's beeping. Uh, let's get... So then, at DC amps, we are pulling 82 amps to uh, pull at 5.8 kilowatts. So if we had to overload a phase, in other words, if I had to take one of these heat guns, move it over to this phase over here, 
Now we've got four kilowatts on phase one and you'll see it's flashing overload. And if I leave it there for long enough, it will shut off. All right, so now to clear this fault over here, you hear is a little gentle little beep. To clear the fault, you gotta hold down the enter button. Okay, hold it down for about five seconds or more until that warning sign stops flashing. There you go, the warning sign stopped flashing. And you can set it to auto restart on overload as well. And then it will start again, giving output power. After the overload, it'll run through the faults, but it showed fault 23 straight afterwards. One thing is, once you've checked your to check your firmware version, it might shut off now. You can push the up button while from the home screen. Keep pushing the button. It's a touch screen, so it's no real push. There was the firmware version. You saw that at point 111. Now to turn the unit on and for it to stay on, you hold it in for more than three seconds. Okay. It comes on. Alright, we were looking at firmware version earlier. Okay, that's the firmware version. The latest one that we have as of this video is 1.19, which you need to upgrade to. If you want to push the output, if you want the output to come on, you hold down the enter button for a long time. There we go. Once it's beeping like that, did a little herb and all of a sudden AC output comes on. And okay, now that we've pretty flashed, flashed the guy, you'll see what the um, firmware version is over there. There we go. 1.19 is the latest version as of the time of this video. If you want to turn the AC output off, you'll notice there's no button to turn off, only a button to turn on. To turn the AC power off, you have to hold the escape button down until it goes like that, beeps, a quiet little beep, and you're a click, and those little icons will disappear on top, the little bars, and then the output is off. To turn the output back on again, hold down the enter button. There we go. And all of a sudden, the AC output will come on. And there it is.